The Good Friday Miracle April 10th, 2020 On Good Friday, I walk up the ramp to the emergency room and enter the hospital to start my shift. I hope that today it may be different. This is going to be a better day, I tell myself. I have prayed for relief, not so much for myself, but for my patients. I've seen that the mortality rate of intubated patients in our ICU is 50%. As deadly as the bubonic plague was in the Middle Ages. Things have to get better, don't they? Yesterday, a COVID-19 patient on the medical ward became acutely short of breath, with an oxygen saturation in the low 80s. She had a non-productive, dry cough, chills, and a fever. The physician tried to support her breathing with an external positive pressure mask, a BiPAP. It is much like the mask that people suffering from sleep apnea wear during the night, but the BiPAP failed to raise the patient's blood oxygen level. At noon, she was transferred to the ICU for sedation and intubation. My heart sank when I took report on the patient Thursday afternoon. Miss C is one of the floor nurses. She is a shy, quiet woman who has given or taken report from me countless times over the years. I silently vow to fight my hardest for one of our own. I know it could easily have been me or one of my coworkers admitted to the ICU fighting for breath. The intubation in the ICU went smoothly. I pushed a sedating drug through the IV tubing, immediately giving Miss C the gift of sleep. The anesthesiologist, a Russian gentleman with a three-day beard and a calm manner, made the procedure look easy. The patient's oxygen level slowly rose as the ventilator pushed against the resistance of stiff lungs, airways inflamed by the invading virus. Because Miss C requires only light sedation, I am able to talk to her. I try to encourage her, saying, concentrate on breathing, slow and deep, and stay strong. We are here for you. You're going to make it. Miss C nods her head, trying to believe my words, but I can still see the fear in her eyes. I adjust the light sedation and step out of the room. We nurses have loudly and bitterly complained for weeks that we have not received extra long IV extension tubing. Using the old tubing, we must go into the isolation rooms whenever we have to adjust the intravenous solution's rate of flow, replace an IV bag, or hang a new medication. Often, we must access the IV line and push a sedative or narcotic directly into the bloodstream to rapidly suppress delirium and agitation. And each time we open the door, we release that COVID bomb because we don't have fans in the windows blowing the virus out of the doors. When I return to work the next day, Friday morning, I am surprised and relieved to discover the extended IV tubing arrived late on Thursday night. The IV pumps are now positioned outside the room, so I am able to adjust them or inject IV meds without entering the room, minimizing my exposure to the COVID-19 virus and minimizing release of virus into the unit. That one simple improvement lifts my spirits. I suddenly feel like a super nurse. I will save all my patients. I will defeat the Grim Reaper. The gaggle of doctors rounding in the unit turn and stare at me like I'm crazy, then continue with their rounds. Even the rate of admissions to the ICU has dropped, the ER sending only one patient that morning. Miracle of miracles. The night nurse gives me the best news of all. She was able to wean Missy off her sedation. The patient's oxygen level is stable. She is awake and calm and waiting to be extubated. She is the first COVID-19 patient to be purposely extubated that I have cared for over the last two weeks. I suit up with four layers of PPE, don my face mask and goggles, and lower the face shield over my head, a generous gift from one of the New York area unions. The union donated 5,000 priceless shields. I open the door and slip into the room. When Miss C sees me, she wiggles her fingers, motioning for me to come closer. Both of her wrists are restrained for her safety because too many patients are pulling out their breathing tube out of desperation just to breathe. Hesitating at first, but looking at Miss C's bright eyes, I step to the bedside, lean closer, and tell her, 
You're going to get that tube out today, and I'm going to help you keep it out. A few minutes later, the ICU fellow and the respiratory therapist enter the room. They remove the breathing tube safely and switch her to a high-flow nasal cannula. Her first words are, thank you. Tears of joy run down Miss C's face. I cannot hold back my tears as well. A truly good Friday. Thank you, Lord, I whisper to myself as I exit the room. I remove my outer fourth layer isolation gown and stuff it into a plastic bag so it can be reused over and over. I pull off my gloves and mask and go to wash my hands. I know not to touch my eye and wipe away the tear.